Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are here with an amazing woman, Deborah McCormick. She is going to be talking about the five essentials for a magnetic LinkedIn profile. We're also going to be going into other things like what is LinkedIn etiquette and what is how to start a conversation on LinkedIn with somebody that you want to connect with. Um, so Debbie McCormick is known as the LinkedIn boss lady. I love that um, because she's a best-selling author, an award-winning speaker, an expert on increasing your business and personal vi visibility through LinkedIn. Whether you're looking for a new job, a new job career or your next client, Debbie can help you. She specializes in writing magnetic LinkedIn profiles, allowing your potential clients or new employer to find you with ease. They will be impressed by your expertise and be eager to pay you or work with you. She is now an in-demand trainer and speaker and has worked with Harvard Club of Boston, excuse me, NASDAQ, Lincoln Moto Company, Mortar Company, and um, top selling realtors, CEOs, national, known in business groups, and even as an award winning, Emmy winning producer. Please help me welcome Debbie. Thanks so much, Debbie. We're so excited to have you here. I bet that you're not as excited as I am. I'm just, I'm willing to take bets on that. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I loved y'all before I ever got here because I grew up in Westchester, Westchester High, the whole enchilada. So you are trotting sacred territory as far as I'm concerned. And I feel like I have a bond with you already. I am delighted that you want to learn more about LinkedIn. I'll tell you a little bit of my story in just a second, but I, I, found LinkedIn to be unintuitive when I first started learning it. And so I hope I can help you out today with giving you some good info um, so that you can come unstuck if you're stuck somewhere in learning LinkedIn. Okay, so LinkedIn is its own little beast. It is not a bio, it is not a resume. I made that mistake. I put my bio up there for the first four years that I was on uh, LinkedIn and got very little traction as now I understand very clearly why. It is not a resume, it's not a bio. It has to be written in a certain way so that people can find you. Um, why be on LinkedIn? Because the platform is so huge, number one, that when someone Googles you, it will come up possibly even before your website because your website's like a pebble. The LinkedIn platform is like the Pacific Ocean, study class, right? So the other two um, it will, it's huge. It will come up in the top, generally in the top five results. Somebody, um, does somebody want to mute themselves just in case you haven't? Thanks. Um, so it will come up if you don't have a great presence there, if it doesn't showcase what you do and who you are, then you're losing some business that we don't want. Okay. So the way I got on LinkedIn or started learning about LinkedIn was I left the world of nine to five in 2008. I had been a nine to fiver all my working life. And I decided that I was going to hang out my shingle as a professional writer. Right off the bat, I got my dream job. I wanted to, I wanted to go into the sane and genteel world of politics. And I got a job right off the bat as the staff writer for a U.S. congressional campaign. I was in heaven. What I didn't know was that challenging an incumbent who is a self-funded millionaire with name recognition is a very high mountain to climb. So when the election was over, my challenger candidate had, had lost and I had nothing in my pipeline, no gigs, no clients, no nothing. I started taking whatever writing gigs I could find, um, 
I was very disappointed and discouraged. As my discouragement went up, my bank account went down because as you know very well, um, your vibe and your energy are everything when you are doing the work that you do. And so um, I started sending out, I got to the point where I thought I had to start sending out nine to, uh, nine to five job resumes. My self-confidence was about the height of my largest toenail. And um, as you can imagine, that vibe didn't get me very, very far in the job search category either. One day, my girlfriend said, you have got to stop with this resume stuff and get on LinkedIn. They hire people there. They're looking for people there. People are looking for jobs there. People are offering their services and people go on there to find out if somebody can help them solve a problem. So I said, well, that's fine. I've had a, I've had a profile up for four years. Hasn't done anything, but I've, I do. I've had it. And um, went on LinkedIn seriously this time for my job hunting and realized that there was no instruction on how to write a profile that attracted people to you, the right people to you. Um, there was no instruction about how to, to, what to do first, second, and third, how to navigate things. And so I just read every book, blog, and article. What, what the, hey, I had time, right? Um, I read everything I could get my hands on about how to do LinkedIn correctly, successfully. In the meantime, I was going to networking meetings. Ah, yes, this is my little Superman because I was, I was determined to master the beast. Um, I was going to networking meetings and I, over time, became the person who was sought out when somebody had a LinkedIn question. And I thought, ha, aha, maybe this is what I'm being called to do. Maybe this is my groove. And so um, I posted my profile. Within a month, I got an email from Lincoln Motor Company saying they had seen me on LinkedIn. They were coming to Newport for a sales conference. And would I come and speak on LinkedIn? Yes, yes, I will. And so um, the, my career as a LinkedIn trainer was born. That was seven years ago. I have continued to learn um, every day because LinkedIn seems to change something every day. So it, it keeps me in the game and people who don't have time to keep up with all their changes um, find me a great resource. So I hope you do too. All right. So the foundation of your marketing is literally your website and your LinkedIn profile. It's because of what I said before, LinkedIn is such a huge platform that it will come up right alongside your website when somebody um, searches for you. So um, it is important for you to have a great showcasing profile. If you have a bad one, it's even worse than if you don't have one at all. Now, in the United States, there are 500 million, more, more than that, members, United States alone. And of those, 61 million are executives, decision makers, and influencers. So what is it costing you to show up in front of them, either not show up at all in front of them, or to show up badly? It's costing you business. Now I work with inspiring and visionary men and women who want to change the world through their businesses. But the thing that is stopping them a lot of times is they don't know what to do first. They don't know how to become visible to their ideal clients. They don't even know who their ideal client is. They have no idea how to become known as an expert or create a following. So that's how I help them. So let's jump into the essentials. Um, the number one essential is keywords. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's the number two essential. No, the number one is you have to have um, an idea of who is your ideal client. Um, if you don't know who you're talking to, then how do you know what to say? 
if you had an audience of a 10 year old boy and a 60 year old man, would you speak to them differently or the same? It would be differently. That's exactly why knowing who your ideal client is makes your marketing exponentially easier because you're talking to one person, maybe two people, depending on what you do in business, but you are talking to one person and you can write to her all day long or him. So it makes your marketing copy really easy. All right, number two, and that is strong keywords. Um, keywords are nothing but search terms. So let me give you an example because I'm such an easy example to take. If somebody is looking for a LinkedIn trainer and they type into Google or the LinkedIn search box, LinkedIn trainer, up comes all the results for LinkedIn trainers. Now, how did Google know to bring up those people? Because in their copy, in their marketing copy, and let's, let's narrow this specifically to LinkedIn. In my profile, I had the term LinkedIn trainer. So when someone typed it into a search box, the search engine spiders, as I call them, saw it in my profile and brought us together. That means that this searcher can take a look at me and see if I am somebody that he, uh, he or she would like to do business with. Exactly the opposite. If I don't have the term LinkedIn trainer in my profile, then this searcher, and it, I, I am a LinkedIn trainer, but if I don't have a, that term there, this searcher who is literally looking for me will not see me. That's how important keywords are. All right. So they're just search terms. It is important where you put them. It's called optimizing your keywords. And here we go. There are several places that you need to have them. Number one is in your profile headline. A lot of people just say VP of marketing um, and leave it. This is very valuable real estate. This is where you put your keywords. When you're on a PC, you have 120 characters that you can utilize. When you're on a mobile device, a, an iPad, for example, you have 220 characters. Now, I have reason to believe that LinkedIn just changed that recently and that no matter what you're on, a PC or an iPad, you can get 220 characters here. But it used to be different. So double check it because 100 characters more is a lot of real estate. And as you can see, everything that I put here describes, describes me and is a search term that I can be found for. Okay. Your second place is you want to put it in your keywords in the about section. The about section is, we're going to talk about how to structure, um, but it is at the top is a, is a little intro to you or um, what you want to do for your clients. And then you go right into your clientele and you go right. And then from there, you go right into your specialties. It doesn't have to be. A and B like that. You can put specialties first if you want to, but specialties are where you can use your keywords. Okay, that's your about section. The experience, headline, and body. Now I'm talking about your current experience. Let me see if I can get one little thing out of the way here. Okay, thank you. Um, so your experience has a headline of its own. If you notice about doesn't, you can create your own headline. This actually has a LinkedIn created headline. So right up here is where your strongest keywords go. And then you utilize them again, all the way through the body. Okay. So the headline and the body of your current experience. Then in your skills, this is an overlooked place. It's literally called skills and endorsements. I will come back to endorsements in, in just a moment as to why you shouldn't even worry about them. Don't even think about them because they're so bogus. But let's talk about skills here for a second. 
So as you can see, my three strongest skills are right here. And then it says show more. That tells you that you want your three strongest keywords, one, two, and three here, because they're only going to show three unless somebody clicks the show more. And then you can have 25 of them if you want to, but you got to have your strongest ones up front here so that they show. All right. The number four essential is writing structure. This, this, the structure and the POV, the point of view is hugely important. The, the, the about section is not, and you're going to do your about and your experience in the same structure. But this happens to be an about section from a guy I saw on LinkedIn. Hi, I'm Jason. Do you notice that each one of his lines start with either I or my? This isn't, yes, it is where you talk about yourself, but you don't talk about yourself by listing your goals, your gifts, and your focus. The way that you do it is you talk about the results you give your clients. You talk about your services in terms of results you give your clients. Do you see the difference? It's the difference between I do this and you'll see this. This is what I'm talking about, about a writing point of view. You talk about them. Yes, you are going to have to talk about yourself every once in a while, but it's not all about you. It's about them and the results that they will get from working with you. So as you can see, and you don't have to read all of this by, by any means, but um, I, I talk about positioning yourself as a thought leader. I talk about make it easy for your ready to go buyers to find you. It's about the reader. Now, the structure is hugely important. Do you notice that here on my about page, there is no paragraph longer than two lines. That's because you want the reader to be able to take his left finger and go slowly down the left side of your writing and get the gist of what you're telling him. He doesn't have to read every single word, he skims. And that's why bullet points and short paragraphs are so important. Long paragraphs put a block of black ink in front of the reader's face and they recoil a lot of times like, whoa, whoa, that's way too much information. If you keep it like this with a lot of bullet points, and as you can see, I've had fun with the bullet points and you can do that. Um, have, have your bullet points so that they can say, make it easy for you ready to go buyers, position yourself as a thought leader. Bum, bum, bum. They just go right down the line. They can see within your clientele, they can see if they fit there or if they don't. Self-selection. If they don't fit there, then they don't even bother you. All right? Specialties. Is this one of the things they need? No. Then they'll either call you to say, do you do what I need? Or they'll self-select it out. It's perfect. So, and remember all within here are your keywords. So tell the reader what you do in terms of how you will help them and use bullets and one line paragraphs for easy skimming. All right then, essential number five. How are we doing on time? Ooh, great. The photo and the banner. Most people kind of skip over this. Um, as you can see, here, this is what's called the banner. And this is LinkedIn's uh, default turquoise, a lovely color, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't do you any good. It doesn't say anything about you in this case. Now, Scott is not somebody that I know, but excuse me, I picked him up because IT manager at Make It Right tells you absolutely nothing about what he does, except that he's in IT. But what's Make It Right? And exactly what does he do? What kind of a company is it? I mean, by this picture, you'd think he was a dog trainer. This is not the impression you want to give. All right. Turns out 
just between you and me, that Scott Freeze is the IT manager for Brad Pitt's nonprofit called Make It Right, which he created after Hurricane Katrina when he saw that the poorer parts of New Orleans were not being rebuilt as fast as the wealthier parts. So Brad, being Brad, puts together a group of construction people and engineers, creates this nonprofit and takes them all down to New Orleans and builds houses for the poorer people, which is fabulous. But you don't know any of that by looking at this. Okay. Here though, what you want in your photo, you want it taken by a pro. Why? Because they know how to light you. They know how to pose you and they can, what I, I have a word called judge. They can judge you up afterwards. You don't want to look 20 years younger. You want to look like your best you on your best day, your most rested you. And that's what a little Photoshopping can do. Taken too far, it's not good. A little bit is great. Um, so a pro photo always. Headshot, shoulders up, look into the camera. You're going for warming, warm, welcoming. You're a safe person to talk to, that kind of expression. Then this back here, you can utilize to your benefit. Um, part of my company name is a, is a search term keyword on its own. So that's great to have up there. The fact that I have a best-selling book is, is great to have up there. That that helps with credibility and positioning. And then down here, I just created um, uh, a, a little area where some of the people that I've worked with, uh, you can see their logos. So have a banner done by someone who's talented at graphic artistry. Doesn't have to be a pro, could be your teenage son, because as you know, they came out of the womb knowing more about tech than we'll ever know. But uh, just somebody that can put this together for you and make it look really great. Okay. Now, connection request languaging. I heard a little birdie told me that y'all wanted to know about um, how to connect properly. Okay. First thing, basic, never, ever use the LinkedIn default language, which is, I'd like to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. Look at the guy at the bottom. That's, that's how everybody reacts when they get one of these. Why? Because the writer didn't bother to customize it to, uh, I mean, it, it just looks lazy. Let me show you what a difference a, a customized message makes. Hey, Debbie, I heard you speak at Kathy Alessander's training the other day, and I would love to have you as a member of my LinkedIn network. Okay, so use their name, use where you heard of them. You can just say, I saw, I saw your profile on LinkedIn. Even better, if you read their book, if you heard their podcast, if you read their blog, all right? Tell them how you knew of them. So it doesn't look like it just came up in a random search. I'd love to have you as a member of my LinkedIn network. It's a compliment. It's very seldom that somebody's going to say no to that. I know a lot of people who say no to non-customized connection requests. Let me say one quick thing about um, the 500 magic number on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is thinking, that if you don't have 500 connections, and if you don't have 500 connections, they will publish how many connections you have, 237 or whatever the number may be. Once you get to 501 connections, they will just say 500 plus up at the top of your profile. Their thinking is that if you don't have 500 or more connections, people who are connected with you, then you don't have much of a network. And so for some reason, they picked 500 out of the ether and people can have as many as a thousand. They can have 
501, but they'll have 500 plus connections up at the top of their profile. Really good. Since LinkedIn says that, and LinkedIn is the godfather, most people think that 500 is the minimum that you should have, or you're not well enough connected. Let's just put it that way. All right. Messaging manners. Connections are about creating relationships. Here's what not to say. I'm looking to widen my network. Now, the good news is that this person, and I got this just the other day, I didn't make this up. The good news is that this person customized their message. The bad news is that I don't care whether they're widening their network. It has nothing to do with me, right? So this is not a great thing to reach out to somebody and say. What's a better thing is, I read your profile, heard you speak, read your book, yada, yada. And I think my network would benefit from knowing you. Would you like to connect? This is another template for a first time reach out to somebody that you don't know. Now, this is somebody that you don't know. Of course, if you know the person, you can say, yo, hey, let's, let's connect on this thing. You know, you can, you can say whatever you want to needs to be a little more formal with somebody that you don't know, especially somebody that you might like to impress. So, okay, I read your book. My network would benefit from knowing you. Would you like to connect? Here are some suggestions for messaging, messaging sequences. Lots of people don't know what to say after the first one. And it's an incredibly fine line between being salesy and bugging someone and being of benefit to them. Gary Vaynerchuk, whom some of you may know, pretty big marketing guy in, in the world, says, give, 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 ask. And what he means by that is that, and, and this is so true on LinkedIn, what he means is, Give of your knowledge, give, give little nuggets of knowledge that will help your ideal audience and just give it to them as your gift with that kind of a vibration around it. This is my gift to you. I want you to know more than you already know about X subject. All right. So your first in a sequence of messages would be the connection request that we just talked about. We just gave two, uh, two samples of them. And remember, it's about them, not you. Now, your second one can be, and this is not too far after they've connected with you, after they've accepted your request. And as I said, if you'll customize it, and if you'll customize it to that person, it's very few that are going to tell you no. Thank you for connecting. I just put this about me because it's easy. I'm a LinkedIn trainer and profile writer. So if you have any questions about your profile or how to use LinkedIn, please let me know. How many of you have accepted a connection request and the very next message you get from that person is a sales pitch? This is like going out on a date with someone for the first time you sit down to dinner and he says, would you like to come back to my house with me? It's, it's out of order. It's not the right thing to do, okay? Don't sell, give, give, give. Then you have earned the right to ask for something. All right, so thank you for connecting. I'm offering you, I'm telling you who I am and I'm offering you the availability to ask me questions or anything uh, that I might be able to help you with for nothing. All right. And then a week or so later, I saw something. Um, and you wouldn't say something. I saw this article. I saw this LinkedIn post and thought it might be right up your alley. Here's the link if you're interested. There is no obligation on their part 
You are not asking them to do anything. You are offering this. Do you see the vibration? So that's a great thing to do as your third and maybe even your fourth and your fifth. Keep them in mind when you see things that relate to their businesses. I say that from here, you can play it by ear because a lot of times it takes more than five or six or seven touches for someone to react back to you in a way that you can see. If the person has responded, yay. But if they haven't, it doesn't mean give up. It means keep an eye out for things that they might like. After, say, I don't know, 15 times, I know that sounds like a lot, but after 15 times when you've reached out to them and you've offered them something, you haven't asked for a thing and you've got nothing back, then maybe this is not your person and you spend your time and energy on someone else. Again, do not use your second message to sell your services. This is a message that I got from a gentleman just the other day. I happened to have connected with him a year ago, and I haven't seen, I haven't heard from him in a while. He had offered uh, things for me to look at, and I had said, no, thank you. All right. I had responded. Um, so I got this from him the other day, and I realized as I was looking at it, he had sent me exactly the same message a year ago when he connected with me. Because I happen to be somebody who doesn't um, delete the messages in the individual's files. So this is a note that's a year old. Must have worked well for him. Not in my case, unfortunately, but it just it's it's not bad in that let me know if you'd like to hop on a call and we can walk you through what's working right now but behind it is a sales pitch and so it's it is not a clean here let me help you i hope you understand the difference between that all right then this is the book that i wrote and i I bring it to your attention only because it literally is the resource that I wish that I had had when I was learning the ins and outs of LinkedIn. It takes you step by step, literally A to Z, on how to put a profile together, a powerful profile, where to put the keywords, how to do the structure, and it does it in the order you need to do it in. So, if you want to go at your own pace and have an inexpensive uh, primer to follow, this is on Amazon. Uh, the ebook is five bucks. So um, you can take, take advantage of it. Believe me, the one and a half pennies that I get per sold book is not going to get me to my dream vacation in the Bahamas. So I am not, I'm not uh, presenting this to you so that I can go on vacation. Just want you to know. All right, would you like some more support from me? Let's say past the Q&A that we're gonna go into in just a moment. Here are the things that I can help you with. There's a LinkedIn profile assessment that you sign up on my calendar, which I'm gonna give you the link to in just a moment. Um, it's a 30 minute session with me. And if your profile is already on LinkedIn, I will have pulled it and reviewed it by the time you and I get on Zoom together. We can do a call, but I love Zoom because of COVID. <laughs> so we get on the phone and we take 30 minutes to go through it. And we go through the essentials and see how your profile stacks up against the five essentials. Okay, very straightforward. Um, it's a fee of $47. and you at the end of that phone call know exactly what you need to work on, all right? There's also a discovery session. And this is for people who are thinking about working with me. They're not quite sure what they need. They feel like they need a little bit more than a, a profile review. 
and they need a little bit more than 30 minutes. So this is a full 60 minutes of you and I being on Zoom together and just talking about where you are in the development of your social media and your marketing and um, coming up with ideas about what to do next. Okay, that's 125. Then I also have a program of LinkedIn profile writing templates. And what that is, is if you decide to write your profile on your own, you will have templates. I mean, these go more in depth than the book does. You will have templates about how exactly to structure. It's about structure. It's about point of view. It's about everything that we've talked about today, but in more detail. And it shows you exactly how to do it. All right. And then there's the LinkedIn done for you profile, which means that I write your profile if you would like me to. It takes a total of about two hours of your time. You answer a questionnaire, you edit what I write, and, uh, and then I post it for you. So you are literally hands off. If you're somebody who says, LinkedIn is not what I do, I'm going to go do what I do, and I'm going to let Debbie do what she does, then this is for you. And um, literally two hours of your time, and then it's posted shiny and brand new. So here's the link. If you would like to talk to me for any reason, um, bookwithdebbie.com, and it'll let you sign up. Now, for you guys, because you are LAX, Westchester, native girl folks, I am going to waive the fee for the LinkedIn profile assessment. So not that it's a, you know, not that $47 is going to make or break you. I get that. But just as a gesture, because I love LAX and Westchester, that is, uh, that is going to be waived for you. It will, I, it, there's not a way on my calendar for you to bypass it. So um, it will just be refunded to you. Um, and so that is that. Okay, here is what my dear Kelly wanted me to figure out how to put in the chat. She didn't know that she was talking to somebody who doesn't know how to take a, a, a PowerPoint page and put it in the chat. So let me just tell you, my email is info at linkedinbosslady.com. You can shoot me an e uh, email on anything at any time. If you want to go see who I am and what I offer, it's just linkedinbosslady.com, okay? Easy to remember. Um, booking on my calendar is bookwithdebbie.com. And then you can always connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, you know what my photo and my banner look like now. So even if there's another Debbie McCormick, and there literally is three other Debbie McCormicks on LinkedIn. How? Did, how? Anyway, I didn't think it was that common a name, but if, if you come up with a couple of Debbie McCormick's, you'll be able to see who I am. All right. It I is. Think, I think we helped you out there, Debbie. And look in the chat. Oh, did you really? You are such a good person. Thank you. Oh, okay. not just me. We have some very helpful people. Oh, thank you. Thank you to all the helpful people. Thank you. All right. Let me put my little. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right. And let me stop sharing so that I can come back and um, see you. All right, Debbie. So do. we have some questions. Oh, I was hoping we would. Yes. So um, if I am asking a question and you need a little bit more clarity, we do have some time. So um, you are welcome to uh, ask the question yourself. So Joe, I'm actually going to go to you. If you want to ask the question that you are going to ask, um, please feel free to do so. You're on mute, so. All right. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Hi, Joe. So the question I had to you is, is there a place to report the uh, to LinkedIn when you're getting scam jobs? What a, 
Uh, you In other words, you get a email that offers a job that you know that doesn't exist because what they're doing is they're you know, basically gone out and found somebody else's profile and they're basically giving you a phishing email, uh, what, you know, something to the effect of, you know, well, tell me about your professional interest. So have you run across any of those? Uh, Joe, let me just say before I answer your question that it stuns me. It, ne it endlessly stuns me how people use their energy in the world. Mm-hmm. Now I'm okay. I'm done. That's my rant. It's it's <laughs> one of my shorter ones. Um, what you can do is at the bottom there is at the bottom of a profile page there is a way to contact LinkedIn and you can report them. They don't make it easy to find their contact information. They didn't ask me because I would have told them to make it easier. Don't they want to hear hear from their constituents, if you will? But um, there is a way to do that, to contact them and let them know, um, take a screenshot of what you're talking about, attach it, and then uh, and you're basically done. I'm, right. I'm so sorry you're that's happening. You're saying that's at the bottom of your profile? Is that where that's showing up at? That, that is generally where it'll say contact us and then they'll lead you all around the mulberry bush and they'll finally um, give you a, a real direct way. Now you can also report it to the community and do a, a community service that way. Um, and they do keep up the LinkedIn guys behind the screen, the Oz, <laughs> do keep up with um, the community forum. So you can report it that way. I hope Fantastic. that- um, also, Carla has a quick comment. A uh, comment more so for to answer. So Joe, if it's a direct message to you, for in your messaging, there's a, like at the top of the message, three little dots on the right-hand side, you can report that particular message. Great. Mickey? I had something interesting just happen when you talk about, um, you know, oddities i am a solopreneur and i found out that someone said they were working for me under my company under my business page so i reported that to linkedin finding you know digging around and trying to find all of that and i reported it and i did get a response that they would look into it who knows what's happening but I thought i'm that i'm confused as to how they would list themselves on your business page if they're not an admin of your business page um you know, I, I, I just say you work for a company yeah. and that's my company. So, um, you know, I have, I've never really been an admin for the companies that I say I work for and I am listed under those companies. Um, so he just, he's an attorney. And I was like, oh, I didn't know I had an attorney working for me. Well, lucky you, um, a, a scammy attorney. What a yeah. unique uh, thing. Yeah. Um, did you start telling him that he has to pay you? Um, <laughs> there you go. He has to pay you for working for you. Uh, the next one is, uh, Lewis, I didn't quite understand your question. I think that you're right there. Um, so if you want to ask it real quick, that would be great. And take yourself off I'm, mute, of course. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to. What, just putting my information in the Oh, sorry about that. I thought that was a question okay. for Debbie. Okay, I'll no, go on sorry. to the next. No problem. Uh, Tiffany, you had a question. I, <laughs> uh, yes, my question, Debbie, is, um, so do you recommend um, using emojis on LinkedIn? Because um, for me in the past, I've always considered emojis like cartoons. And so I don't necessarily think it's professional, but I have noticed it has become more popular or people are more comfortable using lots of emojis like in your regular profile. Yes. I mean, what's your what's your thought process on, on that? I mean, is it a, a short-term trend or is that something that's gonna be okay long-term? Um, I I think it's okay, but here's, here's what I think for you, Tiffany, you gotta do what makes you comfortable. If you don't think that that's a very, um, it's just not serious enough or it's just not professional enough, then mm -hmm. don't do that. Use bullet points, just the little circles, 
uh, the circles or the dots or, you know, the normal bullet points. If you don't want to use emojis, I see them all the time. I happen to, I, I happen to be of two minds. I, I think that it, it, it's more colorful and it makes your profile more interesting to read. Oh, look, she put a key there or, you know, and, and, and it's got green and blue and yellow in there and it just makes it more colorful and more fun. I've also though had exactly the same thought that you did. And that is, are people not going to take me seriously because I've got, I've got little check marks or something in there. So what, what I would um, advise is absolutely do what you think you can use um, something besides a dot. Like you can use a check mark, you can use a diamond, you can use things that are not cartoonish to you. And that still, you know, mixes up your profile a little bit and makes it not look like everybody else's. And Debbie, one of the things that we had talked about, about um, etiquette is, you know, this is not your Facebook. This is not your Instagram. This is your professional mm -hmm. profile. So, you know, one of the things to keep in mind is, yes, you can use some of those things, but you also want to, you know, do it so that it's not a Facebook post and it's not a, hey, I did, you know, this last night and this happened, emoji, emoji, emoji. Right. You know? Oh, right. Yeah. We're talking about... Um, I, I think Tiffany was talking about, and this is the question I was answering. I don't, uh, maybe it wasn't the qu question Tiffany was asking, but if you're talking about emojis down the left hand side of say your about section, right, Tiffany, like your, your bullet points, do you yeah. use emojis there, right? Yeah, I was talking about just, yeah, and your about section. I just, I see, I see the emojis, I mean, all throughout the profile, uh, well, it's, I'm not, not in, well, actually, I haven't even seen it in, in, in a recommendation as well. It's just, I'm seeing them more frequently. So I don't know, I just, um, for me, I just, it makes me quite, when I see the emoji, it makes me question professionalism. So, but I see it keeps coming around. So I don't know if I'm just old school. Um, yeah. You're too young to be old school, Tiffany. I'm, I'm just telling you that. Um, Thank you. No, here's, here's what I would recommend. Uh, do only put them when you're listing something like bullet points, except you've got, if you want to put something different in there besides that dot, then cool, do that. I would not, and I don't put emojis all over my profile. Got it. That kind of crosses a line for me, but it's so individual that you've got to do what makes you feel good. Perfect. Okay, good. Thanks for the question. Renee, did you have a question? Oh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to uh, ask you if it's, in, I, I, when I first joined LinkedIn, I, knew, I was told it's important to post, you know, how you can post either your own writings or repost an article you saw. And if it's still considered important, you know, critical, especially a professional, uh, you know, what you do type thing. And, and uh, uh, I was told it's you know you need to do that to establish that you're you're you know what you're talking about in your particular field you're a pro he's you know that's right that's right stuff. Renee um, what I advise my clients if if it is appropriate for their business is to um, write an article about once a week maybe twice a week depending on their schedules of course mm -hmm. um, you know, somebody, you say somebody, write two articles a week and, and their hair goes up in flames, you know. Um, it's gone. Not your problem, <laughs> I can see. It's but I, gone, right? <laughs> I love it. I love just teasing you, Renee. Um, uh, so, yeah, that is absolutely the easiest way to become cons considered an expert in your field is to write. Um, you don't have to get as serious as white papers what we in politics used to call white papers, but um, you can just, what I recommend is that you take a, one gem of your business and write an article about it. I recommend that it not be more than 300 to 500 words. And that's generally doable. You know, we're not talking about war and peace because nobody wants to sit there and read war and peace, right? So uh, uh, 300 to 500 gem that you think most people don't know about your business. Again, the vibration is a gift. I am not asking anything in return. 
this is from me to you, right? And you just keep posting those articles or posts. There's a difference between posts and articles. Posts are just those things that come up on your um, homepage feed. Articles are things that you have to dig a little further for. Right. But I, you know, there's there's some detail in that that I don't want to go into right now because I don't think I have the time. But so you do that um, once or twice a week consistently from your hospital bed if necessary, <laughs> right? Yeah. You keep that cons consistency is the key on LinkedIn. You keep that consistency coming and you will start getting people who are following you, um, especially if you post on uh, the home page and then you carry it over and post it on your business page. And that's not something that I talked about today, but it is, it is very valuable to have a business page. If for no other reason, then your logo will populate over on your personal profile when you're talking about your current experience. But that's a little mini seminar in itself, business pages. But um, to answer your, to get back to your specific question, Renee, it's really important to be consistent once or twice a week. Yes. Does that answer what you were hoping for? Basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got I to gotta work. <laughs> okay, great. Well, you know, if you want to jump on a call or something, I'll, I'll be glad to talk to you. That was great advice. Mickey, do you want to say um, what you were saying really quick? And then I'm going to go to Brian. I just thought it would be great if we all linked together. And this is one of the things that I've really loved about Zoom is that if we can all save the chat and we have pretty much everyone's contact information because everybody was really good about putting that in there and we can practice um, linking and saying, hey, you know, we, I saw you on the LinkedIn webinar at, with the LAX Coastal, let's link. And then, you know, we've just built our network by about 20 people. So wait for my invitation because I'll be doing Sterling it. idea, a really great idea. And if I may piggyback on that, because you just gave me a really great uh, reminder. And that is that when a post just sits there and nobody likes it and nobody comments on it and nobody shares it, then LinkedIn thinks you're a wallflower or something. They don't, they don't promote it, right? But when your connections, let's just take Mickey as an example. When Mickey does a post and you see that she's done it, at least like it. If you can think of something to say, comment on it. And if you think it's really valuable, share it. And your entire first connection web, if you will, net, uh, will see it. And that really boosts her profile, if you will, used in a different way. That really boosts her image with LinkedIn. They go, whoa, she, every, everybody likes what she wrote. And then That's if you all do that for each other, it's good. That's also great advice for your give, give, give um, um, philosophy. Yes. If, if you have a business that you're really interested in, make sure you're always commenting and sharing their posts because they'll see that too. Exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. And we got to, we got to give the give, give, give ass to Vaynerchuk. He's the one that made it up. So I can't take credit for that. And also to add to that, I don't just do it in this group. I mean, she's saying if you've met somebody oh, yeah. on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. you know, or on a Zoom call, you can email them and say, hey, it was great to meet you on XYZ Zoom call. And just remember, make sure you remember which one it was that you actually met them at. <laughs> <That'd be helpful. laughs> Always a good thing. Yes. Uh, we do have time. So I am getting more questions in the chat, which is awesome. So I'm going to keep going until we um, run out of questions. We did put this until 2.30 because I we knew that there were going to be a lot of questions. Okay. So um, I will keep going. So uh, LaVon asked if we will be able to use the PowerPoint and if we will be able to get a copy of this. Absolutely. Uh, Debbie and I already spoke and she said that she is okay with that. So um, for participants that joined on, I am happy to send that out. Brian, I'm going to let you go. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so real quick uh, question in regards, how do you, um, how do you approach the uh, LinkedIn pages, the business pages? Is that something that uh, 
is it is it truly getting traffic uh, to local businesses, or is it only just the uh, the major brands that are uh, that are resulting uh, positively from it? Oh no! And no. Debbie. Before you answer that question, somebody asked, how do you know if a group is active? So you may as well answer both questions at the same time. How do I know if what is active? If a group is active. So I guess a group in LinkedIn. But anyway, go Can to Brian's question. Because I'm not sure I understand the question. Okay. All right. Let me just let me just toss a little lozenge in here. Okay, Brian. Excuse me for just a second. Um, so the LinkedIn page does a couple of things. And we were just talking about this like two minutes ago. It's a, it's a little bit more detailed than I can get into right now. But yes, it is worth it. A, because it shows your logo over on your personal profile. And that is worth a lot. If somebody thinks that you have invested not only in a really good profile, but in a showcase business page, then they know that you are not a fly-by-night enterprise, right? And you've got your logo right there like a real business, like Coca-Cola. So it, that is a good thing. Um, the, the way that it's different is that um, you can do updates on your business page about products and services and things that are coming out and things that are happening in your business much incredibly easily and you just start to get followers for example you ask your friends you ask your first connections um please follow my business page if you are so inclined and then you get a bunch of people who already know and like you hopefully um we all have connections that we don't really know but you know what i mean and then they come over and follow you and then the updates on your business page go out to those followers not your connections, but your followers of the business page um, every time you update it and put something in there. So every time you bring out a new product or a service, it should be talked about in the, in the business page. And that's what makes it valuable. Does that answer your question, Brian? Well, I guess my, my real quick question though, is that, is there a way to truly grow the page other than ads? I mean, it, are those, are those pages like, you know, Facebook diminishes your, your business page over personal pages? Is that the same structure in, in LinkedIn that the uh, personal pages are getting more traction than the business pages get? No. Um, and like I say, you can start off by asking your first, uh, your first degree connections to follow you. Okay. And then um, at the bottom of, uh, excuse me, at the bottom of my I believe it's both my experience and my about. I invite people to follow my page and I have organically grown my following past asking people to please, you know, people that I know, please follow my page, you know, and you'll get all the updates. I mean, that is the reason that you ask people to follow it. You want to know what I'm doing? You want to know what's next up? Please follow my business page. You'll be the first to know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's a good thing to invest in. Okay, great. Kelly? Levon, you did you have a question still? Yes, I, I do, and thank you. Fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. I guess, and this is maybe about kind of more user, but when I go onto my LinkedIn page, I find it overwhelming because there's just so much happening on the homepage. So I've often thought, you know, how do you rise above the noise? I hear what you're saying. Yeah. But it just seems like there's just so much noise that's coming in people's pages and it changes every hour. Yes. How do you find anything or find me? I am with you, girl. I This is how I felt when I first got on LinkedIn. I just found it overwhelming. So um, there are ways that you can, can break down your participation. Okay, so first you go on your LinkedIn page and you check your messages. Those are people who have messaged you directly. Okay, so check that out. Then um, there's notifications from your network. These are your first connections, your first degree connections who have published something, done something, had a birthday, moved a job, whatever. All right, that takes a five minute glance, really not big. All right. Then where you want to spend your time other than when you're publishing. And, and as I was talking to Renee about 
You want to consistently publish so people know that you know what you're talking about. All right. Other than doing that kind of stuff on your home page, your feed will be all your first connections. Now, don't take it. Don't, don't get, just sit there and breathe deeply five times. Levon. I'm going to be counting for you. Take deep, five deep breaths and just read the top one. That's going to be somebody that you know. All right. The next one's going to be an ad. Skip it. The next one is going to be someone you know and someone you know and someone you know. All right. Someone that you're connected to. Feel free, just like in Facebook. This is the only way that LinkedIn is like Facebook. Okay. Is that is this scroll on your home page? Um, just like on Facebook, you just you just scroll slowly and you stop with a person that you want to read about or a headline that you see you want to read, and then you just keep going. Here's how you limit it. Give yourself 15 minutes, 10 minutes, because it can be. Uh, it could be the same thing as the uh, as as diving into Facebook and not coming up for an hour. You know, it could be a huge waste of time. So clock it. All right. Spend 15 minutes seeing what your connections are doing and maybe 15 minutes at the end of the day. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Thank all you. right. And, yeah. And then that makes it a lot less intimidating. Okay. Yeah, and if you still find it intimidating, up those breaths to 10, 10 <laughs> breaths, and then try it. So I hope thanks that for, helps. Thanks, thanks for all. the great advice. Uh, so Tracy had a comment and then um, she, she mentioned that um, comments are golden. However, to use more than four words when putting a comment, but she also had a question. Uh, so Tracy, do you want to ask your question? Sure. Hi everyone. Um, so yeah, when we were talking about commenting on posts for social media, yes. for all social media platforms, um, a like is great. Um, a heart on your tapping on Instagram is great. And probably for, I don't know the LinkedIn stuff, but I know with every social platform, if you can do a comment and do more than two words, cause people like go girl or happy birthday, like it, they all recognize that as just, uh, um, it's almost like a way. like yeah. yeah so it's like if you do four or more words that has better engagement for you and for the person that you're following and commenting on so just thank try you to, so much I totally forgot yeah. to mention that thank you for bringing that up um but then my question is for LinkedIn because I know like when I started my LinkedIn profile a long time ago a lot's changed but I didn't accept every single person that ever wanted to connect with me because you know, Debbie, you're going to look at my LinkedIn profile and you're going to be like, oh, you know, Tracy at Industrious, but what if I really don't know Tracy at Industrious and you're asking me for a recommendation? Okay. Um, so, you know, I've kind of like, I I'm, I'm sure it's changed now, but that's why I like, should I just accept everybody that wants to, you know, follow me on LinkedIn because that, I don't use it that often. So that's what I'm asking. Gotcha. All right. Um, Great question, by the way, because um, almost every time I get asked, should you know, who should I accept and who should I deny? All right, so who you should deny are your competitors and skeezy people that don't look like, <laughs> that's a technical term, skeezy. And, um, you know, just, they don't have a, they don't have a photograph, their profile's incomplete. You just don't want anything to do with them. Now, let me give you the, pro and the con to accepting everybody. Um, well, other than those two categories. You accept because you never know, maybe um, like if you and I hadn't met and I send you a connection request and hopefully I will tell you why I want to connect with you. But if I don't tell you that, um, you can take a look over at my profile and say, okay, yep, she's a serious person. She's a business person. Okay, I'll connect with her. You never know why I'm connecting with you if I haven't written you a little note. And the, and the great thing about you don't know who I am connected to. 
So because now you and I are directly connected, somebody that I'm connected to can see your profile or can, can see that you and I are connected, say, oh, she does, Tracy does yada, yada, yada. I, that's exactly what I need. And then they contact you. So you never know, kismet. You just never know how it's going to fall. Um, the bad news or, or the con to saying yes to everybody is exactly what you say, that people say you should know who you're uh, networking with. I say, I don't know about you, but I have about 25 friends. I mean, my network would be pretty skimpy if I said no to anybody, uh, to everybody that, I, that, that I'm not friends with. Um, I probably have more than 25. I haven't counted lately. Anyway, um, so you never know who you're connecting to, good and bad. There's a way that you can kind of skim out the bad um, off the top. And then if somebody um, sends you a sales thing as their second uh, message to you, I immediately disconnect. Okay, I don't, I don't put up with that. Um, if somebody sells me on their first message, I say no. So the good news about saying yes 90% of the time is you just never know who that connection is going to know and if they're going to need you. Okay. Does that answer your question? Fantastic. Yes. Well, it looks like we have um, all of our questions answered from the chat. So thank you, everybody. For... Hey, Kelly, it's Farana. Oh, hi, Farana. Um, uh, um, I don't have access to chat. I'm probably the black box on the screen, but um, I did have a question about people who are looking for career change. Um, how would they manage the description and bio on their profile for things like that? Excellent question. And I totally left that out. And I know Mickey wanted me to talk about, Mickey and Kelly wanted me to talk about job change. Okay. Let me tell you, the biggest difference, you're still going to need a profile that showcases you, right? It's going to talk about um, what you're looking for, what you're interested in, what your talents are, where your skills are, all right? The great thing about looking for a job is that the ads that you read, I'm old, so I still call them ads. I think they're still ads that you're looking at when somebody has posted a job somewhere. I'll call it an ad. They, they, they're looking for certain characteristics, right? Um, you need to know how to operate this and you need to know how to do, uh, how to work with older people or, or whatever. They're, they're talking about their characteristics. If they match you, truthfully match you, those are your keywords. So let's just say that you're looking for a position in a geriatric home, in a senior living home, because uh, geriatrics is what your love is. So you read this ad that says what they're looking for, and only if it's truthful, you put down, I, I am, I do operate that machine. So, uh, so a breath machine operator is one of your keywords. You take it, you take your keywords right out of the ad, the job description, and there you are. And if your, of course, your, your search has to be narrow enough that you can use the same keywords, you know, all the time. If you're applying at a, a geriatric senior living home and Boeing, well, those are pretty different positions and you're going to have very different keywords and you're going to be it's going to be hard. All right. But do you see what I'm saying for Hannah? You, you just take it right out of the ad. It makes it so easy. So do you recommend just adding as many just, uh, skills as possible? Genuine skills. Absolutely. And, um, you know, in the business profile where you have clientele and specialties, well, you, instead of specialty, well, let's say instead of clientele, you can put skills as your capital letter, you know, this is, this is the list skills. And then you can say breath operator, blah, 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 ABC. And okay. that 
is perfect. That is good. That's a bullet list that that an employer is going to go right down the left of the bullet list and be able to say, okay, she can do this, she can do this, she can do this. Bingo. Call her. Oh, never, never leave out your contact information. Always put that at the bottom of your about section and your experience section. And especially if you're looking for a job, make sure your contact info is right there at the bottom of your about section. So they don't have to search around and, you know, you got to click about twice or three times to find somebody's contact info. Put it right there where they can pick up the phone and, and call you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Wonderful. Debbie, are there any other questions? All right, then let's get this show on the road. Debbie, thank you so, so much. We really appreciate it. Your expertise is just remarkable um, for me. And I see a lot of clapping hands. So thanks for clapping because oh, I you. totally agree. Thank you. <laughs> um, you can't hear it, but we're doing circle claps. I can't, too, so. I can't see it either. So I'm going to take your word you, <laughs> that you're not just stroking my ego, that there really is somebody clapping. Okay. Um, one Thanks. of the biggest things that I personally learned is um, keywords, why they're important and um, that they need to be put in multiple places. I think that is a huge takeaway and definitely appreciate you bringing that to the forefront and to our attention. Yeah. Um, but Debbie, just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to share with us, for answering all of our questions um, and for being here for us to you know, help us learn, grow and um, get to know more more about what to do with LinkedIn because social media right now is such a big presence in our world, especially with the stay at home orders. So yes, um, definitely appreciate it. So I'm going to stop the recording.